Hello guys, good evening. Uh, Brent Bashera here on the pond. Uh, it's the 23rd of January and I'm ready for my next uh, class, session, discussion, sharing. Yeah, that's what we have here. And um, so what I'm going to cover tonight uh, as succinctly as I can is uh, a rendered version of what I covered last time, my previous video, PTSD and me. Uh, discussed how I was able to transform from uh, or transform trans uh, learn how to process my thoughts and my feelings with regards to my perspectives my views my beliefs my judgments of my experiences in the military and the choices I made so and that, that went on for about an hour so what this is is my uh, inspiration to be more succinct and bring those uh, uh, the the process the mechanism of uh, or the mechanism of perception as I see it in uh, how we perceive reality and how we function and participate with it so uh, I got out uh, just to recap uh, I got out in 07 uh, and uh, through my experiences uh, gained really uh, informative knowledge of life kind of fast track do the experiences uh, that I had with the military and the choices I made and uh, experiences afterwards uh, I consider myself a student, an explorer, and a scientist of life. Uh, I'm open to learning new things. I love knowledge. I'm a philosopher, which is a philo uh, lover of knowledge, and I love to gather knowledge and share it. And um, also being a, a scientist of my own life, being able to uh, look at myself and see the math and the um, verifiability of my actions and my results, my declarations and my actions, my intentions and my actions. So, uh, just to start off, you know, life as I see it when I got out of the military in 06 and 07, to me, uh, I had some awakening moments, some inspirations through deep meditation, through yoga, I gathered some uh, understanding. And what, what came to me was that life seems to be like an amusement park, and that there, there's only one rule to this amusement park, and that the park opens at 10 and the park closes at 10. And what we do between 10 and 10 is up to us. We can go for a show, catch a ride, go for lunch, or just sit on the uh, park bench. Uh, but we just got to remember the park is going to close. Uh, do we know what happens after that park closes? Well, we have some conjecture, some theory, some hearsay and such. We have some reports of people leaving the park, coming back, right, and talking to us about their experiences. Uh, we have channeled information from entities and beings outside the park channeling through people. And if we look at all of our religions and modalities, uh, there's uh, many accounts of people channeling information, Jesus, Joan of Arc, and others have channeled uh, information to bring it to understanding our perspective of the park. So, um, so what does that leave us with? You know, we're either a one-time consciousness with this experience that we're having, this, this moment of reality is only going to happen once, or we're an infinite energy being having multiple experiences. Regardless of what camp you're in, I lean towards this side. For me, the math in my life shows me that this seems to be the, the, uh, the, the path, the loops with the loops and such. But regardless of which camp you're in, uh, it makes this moment that we're experiencing that much more special. It makes it much more uh, that, because in comparison to one time or an infinite, uh, infinite amount of times, this moment is that much more special. So, so what, as my uh, you know, cousin-in-law Jennifer says, so what? So that means, from this present moment that we're able to uh, wield our lives, that it's only from this present moment that we command our, our perspective of, of our reality, regardless of the past and, and our, regardless of the future, we can only operate our vessel, our ship, uh, from the present moment. This is the, the wheelhouse of our reality is the present moment. Uh, and in the present moment, we experience things. And what do we experience? We experience sensation. We experience images, feelings, and thoughts. And that's us in the present moment perceiving the reality. Sensation, images, feelings, and thoughts. And what I learned, uh, a book that was given to me was uh, uh, my friend Ty gave me a book called Secrets of the Millionaire Mind by T. Harv Eker. And in it, uh, T. Harv talks about uh, that it's our thoughts lead to our feelings, our feelings lead to our actions, and our actions lead to our, our results. Uh, uh, there was, a, I believe, Colonel Jim Boyd back in the Vietnam era. He came up with a way of uh, diagnosing how do uh, fighter pilots uh, 
engage in combat and, and being able to make it into an academic application to be able to teach other pilots. And he came up with the OODA loop. And what the OODA loop is, O-O-D-A, that's how we observe. We observe something, we orient ourselves to it, we decide on what we're going to do, and then we act on it. The OODA loop, right? So uh, T. Harv calls it, in his version, it's our thoughts to our feelings, our actions to our results. What's really neat is uh, thoughts and feelings happen on the inside, results happen on the outside, and the bit that trans transforms our inside world to our outside world is action. And again, if we do nothing, nothing happens. We, we, we live in a world, like Wallace Wallace teaches us, that uh, responds or is, we have to work within laws of natural trade and commerce, right? There are laws in effect, there's gravity, there's electricity, uh, there's love, right? And so when we understand these laws and work within them, then we're working in uh, harmony and we're working in a balance with uh, what's going on. Uh, when we look at the past, oh, here, let's, uh, let's bring out our cast of characters. Uh, today, representing the past, we have uh, the master clown, Krusty. What Krusty's representing is the past, our, our, the clown version of ourselves, the smaller self of us, the, uh, the one that thinks there's a lot of calamity, mayhem, there's something wrong, there's something missing, the, he's got the right to be right, there's a lot of blame in Krusty's world, so that's why he's you know, all about you know, making noise, judgment, blame, it's their fault, you know, there's a them thing, and that's what Krusty's representing. On the other hand, we've got uh, Master Yoda. He's representing the future. Again, our higher self, the higher version of ourself, the guy or cat or kitten or guy or girl that gets it, you know, living in harmony with themselves, being a natural citizen on the planet, working with their thoughts and their feelings. And remember what Yoda says, there is no try, it's do or do not. So we have the past and we have the future. And, it, and so here we are, I'm representing and we're representing this now moment. What uh, I learned from, uh, what I'm learning from the shamans, uh, medicine men and women, is that this divine moment, this moment of creation is all there is. We have a past and such, I get that. But the divine moment is the moment of creation, that this moment is what is happening. And you can see children, kids and dogs, they demand our attention in the present moment and try to stray and run up to the belfry of our mind uh, with our thoughts, hanging out with the bats and squirrels, dogs and kids will ask, will demand for our attention in the present moment. And that's because this is the moment of where it's happening. So, uh, let's see here. Uh, right, right. Uh, okay, so um, T. Harv talks about our thoughts to our feelings, to our actions, to our results. So, again, to recap, uh, our thoughts essentially are pictures right, that we have, that we either create or come up through, uh, through random thoughts, but we have them. We have about 60,000 a day, and again, we know that women have 120. So um, we have thoughts, they're pictures, and they're empty, meaningless, and cold, except for the meaning that we give it. So only uh, if we have a meaning of the past or the picture, then that's the meaning that it is. The beauty of being able to observe, observe ourselves having this picture of the past is that we can modify it. When we, when we can observe ourselves, we can pattern interrupt, and we can uh, modify that perspective, we can modify that habit, because we can observe ourselves. Uh, so, that's our thoughts. Uh, again, we've seen, we, you can go on YouTube and see two neurons, which are brain cells, forming a thought, and they, it's magical. Please check it out. It's, it's amazing. It's, it still blows my mind. Uh, so our thoughts create our feelings because thoughts, the pictures in our mind, create a, uh, a physical chemical reaction, releases chemicals in our body. And essentially we have two types of feelings, those that make us feel good and those that don't, right? When we have more imagery, more information in our day that gives us happier feelings, then that's, that's essentially how our cells are responding. But if we're filling our head and our mind, the, uh, the processor with negative images, negative conversations, negative information, then that's the information that our cells are responding to in our body because they can only uh, respond to the perspective of the witness, the viewer, us, us. And when you look at Dr. Bruce Lipton's work, that's what it shows us is that our cells are responding to our perspective of the world. So uh, we have two types of feelings, those that make us feel good and those that make us feel bad. And we can understand then if we're having 
crappy, shitty, negative feelings, then ultimately we have to change our perspective of the past. We need to look at something, uh, either our, our boss or our relationship or society or life or whatever. We, need, we don't need to do anything. I'm not here to convince anybody of anything. Uh, for me, it's I've learned to process and I get it, again, through my military history, through uh, all my experiences. Uh, I've just learned to surf the waves of information. Okay, I've learned to process it as far as I can with my monkey brain at this moment in time. So what I've learned though is that in looking at the pictures of the past or even in the present moment, it's something that happened just a few moments ago, it's creating a physical reaction inside of me. And if I'm having a, uh, a uh, if, I, if I'm suddenly feeling stressful or something, I, I immediately go to what am I perceiving here in the present moment? Am I being present to the moment and, and remembering something or am I, uh, being disconnected because I find if I, I if I stay in too much media it pulls me out of the present moment it pulls me out of being body present moment based or perceiving and it pulls me into my mind if I'm in my cerebellum here too much then I feel this disconnection in my body and I start to get stressed out so I know that right I need to disconnect from the information that I'm collecting okay I need to disconnect from it so that I can reconnect to my body and I find using the Wim Hof method helps me connect to the body my yoga meditation sitting in the pond uh, gives me an immediate connection to body and so these are the techniques that I've learned to learn to process the thoughts because images of the past are what they are old information that's limiting our experience of the present moment these old images are creating feelings in our body now we can be conscious of them or unconscious of them. And uh, so what I find is when I'm stressed out, I don't need to know exactly what it is per se, but I need to know I need to connect to my body. I need to leave the belfry of my mind and just using basic breathing and sitting still. When we sit still, be still and know thyself is the classic phrase. And when we know the truth of ourselves, then, then that sets us free. And what it is, it sets us free from the drama of this of the reality that we're perceiving because we're able to connect to ourselves and allow ourselves to be present to the moment, more heart-based versus mind-based because the mind does what it does. It processes, it judges, analyzes, and compares. And, right, uh, excuse me. Uh, right, so the aspect is then uh, for us being a scientist, being the explorer and the student in our own life, for myself, this is what works for me, is that uh, by sitting still and allowing the pictures through the direct experience, because we can only experience the old in the present moment, and that's by directly experiencing it. Again, we don't need to know what it is, but uh, to recap, the if uh, thoughts, or correction, feelings are processes of the body, feelings uh, are no different than circulation, respiration, and digestion. And when we learn to understand that, then we can let go of these attachments. We have these major attachments to our feelings that cause us disgruntledness because we haven't learned how to process. It's basically like not learning how to breathe properly or digest properly. And so we're mentally influencing how we're allowing the body to process. For example, when we hear a joke, and we're present to the joke, right? And we hear it and we hear that punchline, the comedian uses uh, uh, words that convey an image. We see that image in our mind. It has a meaning because of the meaning we've given it. Remember, normal's a social agreement. So we as a society, jokes, you know, work in our society. So when that comedian uses that, those words, puts an image in our mind, creates a feeling, and then we experience it, go, that was funny, that made me laugh, and we knee slap. Now, uh, when we hear uh, words, again, vowels and consonants of a negative, bad matter, sad nature, puts a picture in our mind, creates a feeling in our body, right? And certainly, certain uh, feelings are absolutely justifiable because we need our feelings. Our feelings is what helps us survive in this world, right? Our body is always in the present moment. It can only be here, right? And I've just learned through the yoga and the meditation that I can feel when I'm leaving my body and I'm in my mind. And when I'm sitting in a cold pond, 
as soon as I leave my body and go into my mind, the cold rushes in and I go, wow, I'm in my mind. And I get this physical response of when I'm up in the belfry with the bats and the squirrels, or I'm in my body, I have a physical, and that's just through, you know, initially cold showers, but also through the meditation and the yoga, I can now, I feel when I'm present to my body. So the body is in the present moment and it's feeling what it's feeling. And so the pain that we're feeling from stress, the pain that we're feeling from either poor mental habits, poor judgment habits, poor processing habits, uh, the body's in the moment feeling what it's feeling being based on perception, okay? And so the body's pain, chest pain, whatever pain, is uh, telling us that to come home, leave the belfry, and come home to where, where we are and, and decompress from the experience, right? Uh, pictures of the past, what is the past? The past essentially is our stories, our history, our injuries, our traumas, our experiences, our events, and our emotions. And now we know that when we are having those experiences of the past, and if they're of a traumatic, dramatic nature, and they're, they're so powerful, we're unable to process all of that experience in that one moment. So the body gives us a free ride, essentially. And it stores that experience in our tissues, in our cells, right? And then what happens is when uh, we're of a, an able nature and we're of more of a safer environment, we're able to process that previous experience. Now, if we don't have, uh, live in a culture that has healthy feelings, uh, healthy processing of feelings, you know, or, or we don't have uh, an elder or um, uh, a, someone, you know, in our family or in our society that shows us how to do a healthy processing of feelings, then we, then we don't really know how to, you know, go about it and what's a healthy way to process our previous experiences. So, like we just talked a moment ago about a healthy process of a feeling is when we hear the joke, we're in the present moment, we hear it, it puts an image in our mind, creates a feeling, creates a physical reaction in our body, joy, laughter, happiness, and we slap our knee, boom. A, what we've learned to do in the, uh, here in the West is we hear that bad matter, sad words, vowels and consonants, puts an image in our mind, has the meaning, the meaning that we give it, and then it creates a, a feeling in our body. And if we're um, uh, unwilling to uh, deal with it at that moment in time, we store it in our tissues healthy or a if you can unless the experience is too heavy a healthy way to process it is you hear the words puts a picture in your mind it has the meaning that you meet that you has the meaning that you give it and then you say wow that that makes me mad i'm angry right that makes me mad i'm angry and what i've learned to do is just you know understand keep expressing what i'm feeling i don't need to you know let everybody know but i'm going wow that really made me mad i'm angry i usually find a good friend or my bride kellyanne and I just talk it out, saying, wow, that was really, you know, what was that? What's the, you know, why do I feel that way? And I just talk it out. That made me mad. That was, why did he do that? And I talk it out. Then I just learn to expose myself to that picture of the past. And it could, regardless, it's my story. It's my history. Maybe it was of an injurious nature. It's got trauma, et cetera, et cetera. It, in being present to it in the now, I'm directly experiencing that event of the past. I'm directly experiencing the the experience and the event of the past to allow the energy of that event to be processed right processed no different again feelings are processed of the body and no different than digestion respiration or circulation it needs to be expunged from the body again no different than the burp sneeze shit fart orgasm or vomit we need to get it out of the body again if we've had small enough you know things like a small sneeze, we can hold that in, right? Hold that in, but if it's a big enough nature, the body's going to release it. The body's going to expunge it immediately from the body. Um, same thing with feelings that are stored, emotions. I feel feelings are, again, this is all just my best guess, right? This is just well, stuff I've learned along the way, and it works for me, and I hope it can help others, okay? So, um, uh, <laughs> distracted myself. So the uh, uh, experiences, events, oh, um, right. So if it's of a, a large of nature, the body has to get rid of it. So 
what I found and through reading uh, uh, John Ruskin's book, Emotional Clearing, is the, uh, through the direct experience, we allow the previous emotions, and that's right, so for me, emotions are the stored stuff, the stored stuff of the past, and it could be of grief, it can be of rage, blame, et cetera, et cetera. It's just what it is. It needs to be expunged from the body. And when we stay present to it, now we can either have the courage, I had the dumb luck courage to be able to sit with my experiences and allow the emotions to bubble up and cry them out. And that's what you gotta do. You gotta, it's, it's what you do. Burping is what digestion does and sneezing is what respiration does and crying is what emotion does or rage or whatever. It's just gotta come out. It's, previously stored information that needs to be released because it's of an energetic nature. It's math, man. So we release these emotions through the direct experience by staying present to it, okay? And it gives us then the connection, allows the body, again, connecting to that, that you had that one too many tequilas or maybe one too many bad crab sandwiches and you think, oh, I can just hang on to it. I can just, you know. But then what's it doing? It's impeding your your experience of the present moment, if we, you know, just release, accept and allow that stored old information, think of the crab sandwich as old information, that too, too many tequilas is old information. You didn't have to consume that information, but because you did consume it, or we consumed it, it's now in our system and we need to release it and we release it through the experience, the direct experience in, in the now. And uh, yeah. And that's it. So pictures of the past, if they're of a traumatic, dramatic, uh, traumatic, dramatic nature, and we can't process them in that moment, then they're stored in our tissues. They're stored in our psyche, right, basically. And then uh, nature allows, when the time is right, for us to have this direct experience to the past. I find through reading a lot of the Sufi texts that, uh, that life Initially, when we, you know, when we're unconscious, life looks like it's happening to us, right? But then later, once we become more conscious in our life and we dial up the bandwidth of how we're, of what we're perceiving, being more open to more potentiality, again, I know nothing relative to the possibilities that exist. When we open ourselves up to more information, we have more appreciation of the present moment. Oh, where else was I going with that? So essentially, we, we have been a result of ourselves, okay? And we are a result of ourselves and we're going to be a result of ourselves. From the present moment, we're able to command the, the pictures that we perceive of the future. So in the present moment, if things look hopeful and, or sorry, doubtful and worrisome and such, where, where's the proof of that? Where's the proof of these feelings? The work of Byron Katie called The Work is, is so impressive in the sense that she asks, some simple questions and uh, I found some great uh, um, uh, connection to myself just hearing how she goes through this the problem solving of the present moment so the our future events define who we're being in the present moment our future events define who we're being in the present moment again if we're looking at uh, tickets to a trip yay just pictures in her mind if we're looking at going to work on Monday, again, it's just pictures in our mind, right? It's just the meaning that we give it. We can change those pictures. We can change our, our how we feel about, because we can only feel in the present moment. And so we can change how we perceive and then thus feel about those, those pictures of the, of the moment. Again, if you look at an Olympic athlete, their, their focus is that that's my gold. That's my medal. When you read and listen to the work of Lanny Basham, the, the attitude of those, those athletes is, is that you know, they stay present, right? They're, they're uh, process-based versus outcome-based. And by staying present to the, our process, we learn to you know, uh, stay as focused as possible to the task at hand. And if our task is the gold, I'm still staying, even though it could be four years away, my vision, my focus is me on that platform with the gold on my neck. But I can only stay focused in the process from the present moment, okay? So what I've learned uh, through the Sufi method, that's where we were, was that, the, that life gives us the opportunity to have direct experience, okay? Uh, certain situations, 
For example, we've heard the phrase, why is that always happening to me? Well, there's two things going on. Firstly, that's the energy of what we're putting out. Again, what we focus on, we attract, and what we put out is what we get back. We're energetic beings. We're of an electromagnetic nature. Electro thoughts are the language of the brain. Feelings are the language of the heart. We're electromagnetic beings, and our personality uh, determines our personal reality, as Dr. Joe Dispenza says. So what I find is that when we have uh, uh, pictures or thoughts of a negative, bad matter, sad nature, that life gives us those opportunities or, you know, what to directly experience those previous uh, events in our life. And that could be of a grief nature, a traumatic nature. And I just learned through my own courage and also through facilitators and, uh, and uh, certain retreats and through plant medicine and through talking with shaman, medicine men and women, uh, that uh, to be present to the experience that comes up. And again, we don't need to know what it is because it could be the uh, crab sandwich or the one, two, too many tequila, but whatever it is, it just needs to come up. It could be a sneeze, a burp. We don't care when we're burping, was that the carrots or was that the potatoes? We just need to burp it up, okay? And that's what we do. We just have the courage to stay present to it. Uh, again, when we feel the fear of that, we're going to throw up, right? Initially, no, no, I don't want to throw up. I don't want to throw up. But when we actually do throw up, we feel so much better afterwards, right? Don't we? Right? So that's the same thing I have for myself is when I, through direct experience, through yoga and meditation, or just sitting still is what meditation is, just being present to the moment and allowing the thoughts to just pass by being present and then allowing the feelings to come up for whatever they are if they're of a sizable nature i just stay present to it and let nature do what it does because nature is allowing us to let that notice that we burp sneeze fart orgasm always at the right time always at the right time as it can only happen at the right time so when we're feeling these feelings that's the time to you know let them out and, and i guess unless you got something else to do so basically that's it guys uh so just to sum up our we're in the present moment in the present moment we have sensations images feelings and thoughts in the present moment uh the thoughts of the past are simply pictures of our mind and you can experiment with yourself if you look at what you had for breakfast it's a picture of what you had if you're going to look at what you're going to have for supper it's a picture okay so the the thoughts our thoughts lead to our feelings we experience our feelings in the present moment, which determine our actions, which, which create our results. Thoughts lead to our feelings, feelings lead to our actions, our actions lead to our results. So if we want to clear the images or the feelings, the experiences, the emotions of the past, it's through the present moment, through the direct experience, having the courage. And if we don't have the courage, there's many, many people that we can, counselors, facilitators, psychologists, uh, uh, medicine men medicine women our doctor you know reach out if you, if you need help there's you just got to raise your hand and ask for it and you can you can always find help right and um i wish you well i wish you all very good luck with it and it's you know think of it more of a, a game and that's for example uh i was brushing my teeth one day and uh i was vexed and disgruntled and just po'd about something and then uh I was mad. Then I just heard this tap on my shoulder. And the voice said, Dad, it's just a game. And when I looked back at that moment as it being just a game, I laughed. And that's where, you know, I have the feeling that life is like an amusement park. There's only one rule. The park opens at 10 and the park closes at 10. And when we lean into our own game and, and really become accountable for the pictures, the... Uh, our thoughts, when we have that ownership and that authenticity of, of who we are, then the whole game changes. It goes from happening to us to happening for us. And it's, it's basically, it is that simple. Don't take my word for it. Warning, there might be a little bit of work involved. But when we truly commit to our path, that path is relatively short. But we just got to commit. And when we lean into our own game, then that's, that's what happens. You know, as Obama and Oprah both said, is that when they got out of their own way, life happened for them. 
and that's and that's what I'm just sharing with you is that I've been able to get you know out of most of my monkey way as possible you know we still work at it every day but you know when we do the game really really works for us so uh, if you guys have any questions you can leave them you know on uh, down below or you can contact me on the Facebook again thank you so much for this opportunity I consider this a sincere luxury uh, I, I'm honored to be able to share the words and thoughts that I am sharing right now we're living in amazing times but we're also living in trying times and so I just for me the best possible thing that I can do for society is just be the best possible version of me that I can be as Plato and Socrates talks about is just really getting at my own game and I, that's all I can share with each and every one of us it takes a takes a village to raise a village or an idiot but when we truly commit to our stuff it really happens and all I can share is that please just try it out be the scientist look at the math of your own life if you do what you've always done you're gonna get what you've always got a tree falls the way it leans if you continue to lean that way you're that's probably where you're gonna end up just saying that's the math it's a non-judgmental observation no different than sailing a ship towards rocks right our society's taking a, a detour as Cory Doctorow says a detour through materialism and and over in an opulence and and overabundance okay but you know we can change our vectors and it happens with us each individual person right it's the tipping point when we all truly commit to the whole program then the big it happens so you know be the tipping point in your own life you know lean into your game when we when we change the way we look at things the things we look at change okay and when when we believe it in ourselves and we're gonna see it in our lives okay there is no blame right it's only judgment and remember blames one finger forward and three pointing back so please just have a look at your own life okay I'm here not to convince anybody of anything this is just my best guess of what works for me and I've just been asked to share my my perspective on on things um, as I see it right now okay I love you guys uh, thanks so much for listening and I wish you well okay have fun kick butt in your own lives okay that was easy. Bye for now.